Hello, friends. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome. Oh, man. Woo. It's one of those days, folks. I feel like today is a chill day. I mean, not that any of these days are particularly crazy exciting. But I'm feeling like kicking back today. Um, and just kind of perusing the verse. Obviously, we got a lot to talk about. Citizen Con still coming up. We got the schedules fresh. Um, actually, you know what? You know what I just realized? They might they might drop some interesting stuff on us today on the website. So if that does come out while we're doing all this, might jump in over that to the website and do some reading and talking and discussing and uh, speculating. But for now, I thought maybe we could take some time and take a peek into the new player experience. I'm not going to play on my alternate account or anything, but I thought today we could run through some of the basic missions. Some of the missions that I was doing last stream and some of the other missions that maybe you don't know about but are kind of nice to do when you're first starting the game, maybe in your first couple of weeks or a couple of months. I know some people have been playing this game for months and still haven't done some of these missions. So I thought I'd show you some of my favorites to do when you're just kind of getting into the casual play, maybe you're not as confident, you don't know all the guns and armor and all that kind of stuff, or don't have upgraded ships. These are the things you can do. So, hope you enjoy. It's going to be a, a day of conversation, a day of casual gameplay, and hopefully a day of uh, toes, right? No, let's not start. Although I do see toes gang in the chat. Echo has quickly become a honorary member. Welcome in, folks. How you doing? Specifically, Echo. How are you today? Good to see you. Tentacle Love, I saw you in here early. Welcome, Jim Flag. good to see you. Doing some bunker missions. Joe 07's buddy, how you doing? Plywood, Cotton, Supposit, Sindos, Cranky Old Man. You gotten to jump in with the org at all yet? Socially confused, hey. Delta Mike, Nahore, yo. Loom. Good to see you all. Fall Matrix, Gravity Noise, and Monte Cos. What are we all up to today? How you guys doing this Tuesday? Lady Space Patrol. 07s. I am currently playing in the PU today. Yes, we are. The, today is a live day. So I've started out in the Pisces starter ship. It's not the actual like starter starter ship, but this is a starter ship. This is the kind of ship that, oh boy, I left my helmet. Crap. I'm going to have to stop at the space station to get another helmet. <laughs> Oops. Um, this is the kind of ship that, like, you would be flying on your first couple of days in the game. You can get a starter package with this ship. You can buy this ship for fairly cheap. I think this ship is, what, 55 bucks, maybe? 50 bucks? I can't get rid of this soda today, I'm, and it's driving me nuts. I don't want the soda anymore. Happy Star Citizen birthday. Excited to see all the articles that come out. You've begun an experiment. You landed your 400i off pad at Microtech, looted the boxes into the local inventory and then bedlogged, opened a login at the same location. Tell me how that goes. Sounds like an interesting one. I do not own an F8C. No, definitely not. Hello from the middle of the woods. Are you out camping? Is that what that means? Or do you just live in a very wilderness heavy place? Because that's cool too. Maybe both. Maybe you live in the forest where you camp. Live servers are going down sometime soon for a patch. I saw that. Yeah, I think it's it's like the next 10 minutes or something, right? I should probably just land at the station and make sure I'm settled in there. Yes, camping. You getting your Star Citizen fix while out camping? It's delayed. The patch was delayed. That is good to know. Thank you. Haven't been camping in ages. I should do that. Yeah, I uh, I miss a good camping trip. It's been a little while for me, too. I think the last camping trip I did was like 2017, maybe. Something around there. We will be deploying the patch starting at uh, 2.20 UTC. Service will be offline for 25 minutes. Oof. 
The patch will require a longer than usual downtime to deploy. Let's see, 220 UTC would be 720 over here. So yeah, it must have been delayed. You got an email from RSI saying that there is a special gift being applied to your account. Came from Concierge, so you think all Concierge members are getting a gift? Do I know what? No, I have no idea. I am not privy to that information. It's delayed for five minutes. Weird. Uh, jerk style whiz. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Thanks for the support, mate. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Only camping you do is at a three-star hotel. Three-star. Look at this guy, fancy guy. Three-star camping. That's pretty nice, dude. Three-star camping sounds in line with something like luxury DMV. It's just, why are those two things combined? The articles will be like, you need to pay $10,000 to buy this ship. I caused a lot of hubbub when I reposted a comment of somebody saying that it was a rich person's game. I was like, well, it's not. And it started a whole debate about Star Citizen being a rich person's game. I don't think it's a rich person's game. It's like, just, just buy in for 45 bucks. Rumors abound of CIG finally giving Top Hat Gang their F8Cs with an additional skin because they want to sell non-skinned ones to players. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't think they should be selling it if they said they weren't going to sell it. But they want more money, I guess, I suppose. So they're selling it with a special skin so that the uh, the OG one can go on sale. Because people want that ship real bad. That sucks for the people who actually spent all the money just to get the ability to buy it. I mean, don't do that, but... Jeez. That's like best western. <laughs> Three-star call. Three-star camping. You've been away from the game for a bit. How is it running? Uh, it's doing pretty well, thank you. It's doing pretty well FPS-wise. The rendering team has helped us out a lot with the Gen 12 updates. I'm assuming at CitizenCon we're going to hear about the final version of Gen 12, the Vulcan API, the uh, progress on DLSS, on FSR, on ray trace and global illumination, all that stuff. That's going great. And they still got plenty of work to do there, so it's not perfect, but it's much better. I'm seeing frame rates of 40 to 50 in some places where I used to see 20s. Uh, as far as server stability, it's still struggling quite a bit, especially with PES coming in this year. We're kind of in this middle ground between PES being added and server meshing being added where everything is gonna be pretty rough. So it's definitely gonna be better than 3.18 when PES came in the game, better than 3.19 on that same code base, but still not casual, everyday kind of gameplay sort of thing. You know, you're still gonna, you're gonna hit crashes, you're gonna get a lot of desync, you're gonna get things not working, inventory problems. Not quite ready for prime time. If they sell the F8C, it's going to be an instant buy for you. They know that. I'm a little disappointed that they know that and they're dipping into it, to be honest. Oh, I was really hoping that was the station. Oh, uh, man, it's going to be on the other side of the planet, isn't it? It is. There it is. All right. We're taking the long way around, folks. So we're just going to stop at this station real quick. It still says... Oh, that's what we're saying. We're going to stop at the station real quick. I am going to make sure to reset my spawn and get a helmet, and then we'll continue with our missions. If the servers aren't down. Also, it's supposed to be a reward for playing through Squadron. Yeah. Now I guess they come up with another reward for playing through Squadron. At some point, you can't keep creeping out all of these rewards and unlockables, right? Like, you can't just keep making more ships because other ships were made obsolete. That's how you have too many ships, right? You have too many ships to pay attention to and not enough ways to differentiate them. I don't think they've come to that problem yet or will soon. 
and I don't think this means exactly that they're headed towards that problem, but like, and, and yeah, it seems like now because they don't have a ship to reward for playing squadron, or is it still going to be the reward and they're just going to see you could buy it too? Or are they going to make a new military ship that'll be the reward that'll take the place of this one? Maybe they make the F7A that, but is the F7A going to be in the PU? PC gaming in general is not a poor human sport, unfortunately. See, now, that's my thing. I understand coming at it from the perspective of, like, this sort of game is, is expensive. Uh, but, dang it, I should have canceled my quantum jump. But it's, it's no more expensive than it's going to be to run the latest AAA game. You know, if you want to run Baldur's Gate and you want to run it well, you're going to need a pretty good PC, probably on an SSD, probably with 16 gigs of RAM, maybe not 16, but likely with 16 gigs of RAM, an up-to-date processor, and a decent graphics card. I would say a 2080 or above, a 1080 Ti or above. Like, yeah, you still need a little bit better to run this game any bit well. It's not an optimized game by any means, but that's by design. It's an alpha stage. It's not like this game's going to run terribly when it's released. They're going to optimize this game so you could run it on a decent PC. So you can't say it's a rich person's game just because it does take a powerful PC to run something like this right now. That's not the design of the game. That's just where it is. And I think it's kind of... Somebody said it's misleading to say it's only 45 bucks. Um, I will always lead with the caveat of don't spend money. You're not going to get to have ships as fast as you do if you spent real money, but I don't know. I don't think it's misleading to say it's 45 bucks. Um, to say you are going to have the best experience with 45 bucks, that might be misleading. Although, again, some people would say that's true. A lot of people like the fact that they don't have money in this game because like <laughs> if you have money in this game there's nothing else really to to shoot for it's like no other progression so it's like don't don't send me money please I missed a message up here. Loving the content since following a while ago. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, Hyperactive. I hope you're well as too. I, I was about to say, I hope you're well as well, and then I stopped myself, so I instead I just said, I hope you're well as too. So, uh, yeah, there's that. I hope you're also well as three, and having a good time. Am I picking one up? F8A? -A? No. A Division, how you doing? Think only the F7C is in Star Citizen, but you could be wrong. So maybe the F7A could be something they'd do something with? There are upgrade kits to the F7A skin. I see. Is the birthday patch out already? Is that what uh, we're calling it? The update they're doing to 320 today? I don't think it's out. It is only 45 bucks. It is! Obviously, you if like if you are getting involved in this game, I think somehow, some way, you should learn that there's a ways to put a lot of money into this game. Just so you know that that's part of how this game works. Like the funding model isn't for everyone. Makes a lot of people feel uncomfortable. Makes me feel uncomfortable when they go too far. Um, but like some people, by principle, aren't a fan of the funding model. That's fine. That's on them. But I think there should be a way that you find that out when you're first learning about the game. Whether that's somebody saying it, whether that's it being in a disclaimer or on the front page, or you see the story for yourself, whatever. I do think people should know about it. But to, to tell somebody up front that you need to like spend a lot of money to, to play it or enjoy it or have a good time with it is, I think, a little bit... Um, not... It's, it's a loaded way to introduce somebody to the game. It's like introducing somebody to Fortnite through the store. Fortnite was a beta 
for a long time that um, I guess it didn't really get directly funded from its store, but like it pushed its store hard. And uh, it's not like that meant that it was more expensive to play. Ooh, ooh, I saw a comment the other day on YouTube. Somebody somebody called Star Citizen one of the most profitable games of all time. Just flat out. And I'm like, do you, they put their financials up. <laughs> Wish they had more profit. Maybe they could have gotten server meshing done faster. Like, they are, uh, they're, they're actually kind of hurting for money, to be honest, believe it or not. Not to say that they deserve more or don't deserve more, but like to say that they're very profitable is just look up what they put away. They still got the auto land function. Should be in game, yeah. Chromos, how you doing? And people talk about SC and it being on console. Good lord, I hope not. Imagine the kind of. Ah, uh, the compromises we would have to make for this game to run on console. Especially, um, like, if it was, if they were going to make this game run on console, they would probably, maybe, they would probably try and target the next generation of consoles. But even then, you might have to depend on it running on the previous generations, which wouldn't even mean the Xbox Series X. It means whatever is replacing the Xbox Series S in a couple of years. That's going to be something weak compared to your average gaming PC. I'm not, I'm not about that. Squadron? Okay. You guys can figure it out. Sure. Maybe, maybe even you could downgrade it for the port. But like Star Citizen? Mm, nah. I say keep pushing, keep pushing the boundaries on Star Citizen. Like, I think that the minimum spec for this game should be a little bit higher than the average game. Not so much that it's just marking the whole market out of the game, but like, this should be a game that you got to build a PC for. They're not profitable because that's they really do reinvest and expand. Right. And like, look at how easily that gets missed in conversation. People actually think this is one of the most profitable game companies in the world. Because just because like it's not like they're looking at the employees and like and being like, oh, look at all these people are so rich or looking at shareholders and being like, yeah, they're getting huge returns on their investments. They literally are just just cause. <laughs> it must be a profitable and it's like that's the level of conversation surrounding this game good stuff what was i here for a helmet I, why did i come to the gun store for a helmet i guess i can get med pens and stuff so as a new player i'd suggest getting med pens i know because i'm still i'm, I'm past the new player point and i still need med pens It's a pain in the absolute arse to not have med pens, as the, uh, I think the British say. It's a British thing, right? Arse. Most profitable, have they heard of mobile games? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. You guys are all pointing out <laughs> mobile games make way more money. You think a lot of people get the $45 ship hop in game and realize that the starter ships are kind of bad. They see all the people flying around their fun ships and realize they got to grind a lot to pay up real money. But you don't. You really don't. Three hours of gameplay, you can make enough money to get a prospector. A prospector will make you millions of credits by the time you have to return that ship. You don't have to get a, uh, an, a, a nice ship. You don't have to grind super hard to get a good ship either. But I do agree, the starter ships are kind of bad. I think... Part of the problem with the starter ships being bad is that all of the gameplay up until probably four or five, four or three years ago was based around combat. Just about. But as like more professions like salvage and repair, refueling, exploration, uh, and the missions associated with those come out, the starter ships will start to be better because you won't be locked to your ship to do a high paying mission. Then the ship starts to become just a means of transportation and it does a little bit more for you. But I also, I do think they should be fixing up the starter ships and making sure that they're gold standard every year. Every single year, starter ships should get a gold standard update. Mm, I just need a good helmet, buddy. And it needs to match my suit. 
I guess I could just get a different suit. So let's just grab this helmet. And then I will grab an undersuit that goes a little bit better with it. Doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. F8L. H-U. PTU was making 10 million a day. 26 billion a few years ago. Oh, PUBG. Yeah, that's a lot to execute. How you doing, by the way, dude? If you guys didn't see the podcast with execute it is popping off people are loving the commentary dude uh thanks for joining me again on that we talked about all the ships being in different stages of production for star citizen and we were able to count 15 plus i don't remember what the number exactly was but there are a lot of ships in different stages of development and we tried to cover all of them for you so that'll be on the second channel space tomato 2 if you want to check it out Shout out to Execute. Can we get a shout out to the uh, Info Runners channel too, by the way? Salvage missions make bank if you steal the drugs. Yeah, that too. If playing the game for only three hours feels like a grind, it's not the game for you. That is yes, 100%. This also isn't going to be a game for a lot of people. There's that too. If the starter ships are made good, People won't buy more expensive ships. I, 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 I disagree. I think that... I think starter ships are going to be valuable to people even after they get the better ships. And I think that starter ships are going to be valuable for things outside of uh, the nicer, bigger ships. That'll probably be more of the case when engineering comes online. And um, things like you know, hangar costs and fuel becoming a little bit more of a thing you need to think about. But there should absolutely be a reason to want starter ships too. They shouldn't necessarily just be starter ships, they should be small ships. Hangar one. Oh, let me, do I wanna respawn here? I do wanna head back to our corp at some point, so let's keep our spawn somewhere else. Should work it out and do a short. Yeah, maybe like a little update on the pod. How many, what was the number of ships we came to the conclusion of during the podcast? All right, guys, before we get started here. What the heck? Please let me out. I'll be back in a cool minute and then we'll get going and uh, start our, I'm hoping to do an investigation mission. Let's see if it pops up. Be right back. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Tomato is on on it. She's going to work on getting that short out execute. That was a it was a good idea. Vulture is super slow now. I understand they will change that. That's another thing about the ships, buying the ships, caring about ships and how much money they're worth in this game. Uh, we're just straight up not playing Star Citizen right now. I made a video actually. I think I yeah made a video um 
it was an exclusive. I made it at the beginning of this year, but it's out on the main channel right now. It came out a couple weeks ago and it's called We're Not Playing Star Citizen because we're not. Um, all of the ships that we're using are going to change drastically, if not because they're getting their components and their engineering values, because they're also getting aerodynamics added. They're also going to have damageable armor. They're also going to have um, different reaction to distortion weapons and they're going to be able to be hacked like you guys can see it right now with master modes the speeds of ships are going to change too for instance did you know did you know that the cargo that you have on your ship the weight the mass that it adds is going to change the way your ship flies so to look at all the ships and kind of judge their performance and make your purchases and decisions based on what they do in game right now it's it's a painful process cuz it generally and leads to disappointment in the future so for anybody who does think that just simply paying money in the game gets you ahead, a lot of times that actually gets you the worst end of the stick too. Because newer ships also work better. Can we can we take off? Do I have an engine anymore? <laughs> Preach! What am I what am I missing here? I don't need weapons. How about engines? Yeah, so if engines are off... Look. Girl, what are you doing with my spaceship? Just let me take off. Where are we? There's something wrong with my cursor. Turn the ship UI off and on. Am I on, like, free look mode? No. I'm, d I'm doing something dumb. I know it's gotta be. Systems are off. Right, but isn't... Oh, flight ready is no longer... Flight ready is alt R... What is flight ready? Oh, thank God. Pumpkin King. Dude. Is that the glitch? Is that a interaction mode glitch? You get stuck in interaction mode. I think that happened to me yesterday, actually. I forgot that was a thing. Because like... My ship was on, everything was working. It was just that for some reason I couldn't control the ship and it was because I was in interaction mode. So you technically need a cutter through 15P, Nomad, Aurora, Mustang, Beta, Aurora Gen 100 series, or you cannot make the jump. You're talking about a, oh, a specific system. Always a great puzzle to figure out what's happening. It's like having a tech problem. I can just go down the list, figure out what's going on. Okay, so I'm looking for a special mission, but I'm not seeing it here. Very unfortunate, actually, that I'm not seeing it here. Maybe it's impersonal. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So this is an example of, I think, a really good mission for newcomers that doesn't get a lot of attention. Uh, is actually, I think, the oldest mission in the game now. This is a mission they put in all the way back in 2016 or something like that. And it's been running ever since. It's one of the only missions with consistent voice acting, multiple outcomes, and more than just pew pew. So let's dive in. Thank you for getting in touch with See what it gets us. Yeah, it is. I just want to know the truth. I attach the insurance claim to get you started. Good luck. And I hope to hear from you soon, one way or another. Girl, I'm about to find your dead boyfriend. And I'm going to give you all the news about him. I don't know if that's something you want to hear. I, I said that like it's a good thing. Maybe not so much. Or they already found her dead boyfriend, huh? It's just the insurance claim. Sorry, girl. I'm not going to find your dead boyfriend. But I will still tell you all the things, because we're trying to get paid. So the nice part about this mission is that it gives you some level of variability. 
Uh, the steps can go in any order. The you can submit what you found in at any time. Like if you saw in the contract manager there, I can literally just submit the evidence. I don't have any evidence, so that probably would not get me very much money, but you can do it. Uh, and you can also, obviously because of that, not complete the mission entirely. So you can get paid more based on finding more evidence, paid less. Uh, and I think you actually get, yeah, you get different voice lines too, depending on what you do. So it is an interesting one and, uh, I think worth trying out as a newcomer. For anybody who's joining us on the video, I did start my recording a little bit late. We jumped straight into this. But we're trying out some missions that I would consider good choices for newcomers based on just kind of their availability, uh, interest level, and maybe the fact that you haven't seen some of them before like this one. But overall, just easy missions that you can do to get a, get a kind of a hold of Star Citizen. Welcome. The microtech investigations shuck, suck. Are those just like caves? Going to caves to find people? If it's Anna, she's voice uh, the commander in Xenothread event duly. No, Anna doesn't do this one. She came on to the project around 2019, I think, 2018. So a little bit after this mission was done. She does Dooley, Agent Dooley, and Miss Babbage. But I think she has a new role coming up. I feel like she said in like a podcast or something recently. Do I think it should be harder to make money or ships should be more expensive? Probably a little bit of both. I think there's got to be a lot of balance between making money and earning stuff in the game. It's hard to judge the game right now because we don't really know how expensive things are supposed to be. So like you could be like, hey, I'm not making very much money from a package delivery. I only make 8,000 credits. When in reality, when the game finally launches, you make 2,000 and 8,000 felt like a ton. Or it could be that we deserve to get 30,000 credits from a package delivery. It all kind of depends on the price of commodities and stuff. Probably the price of fuel, I think, would be the deciding factor on how everything breaks down overall, right? Okay, so we got this space station here. Obviously, some inopportune things happened. And our job with this mission is to go inside and find out what? Because obviously, no other citizens uh, over the course of the last six years could. They were all inadequate. You gotta find the entrance to this place. It's a little shattered side of the lobby. I think it's over here, maybe. No? Where are you? Be great if we could just, like, scan the exterior and it highlighted the entrance for us. I feel like it's... Because we're moving so fast, you kind of miss it. Because the scale is so small. Above the pads. That's what I thought. Yeah, it's above the broken pads, right? Ah, there we are. Alright, and I'm just gonna take us over here. We good. Get rid of that power signature just in case. Won't last long as an MMO if people can buy every ship in the game after two days of mining. Yeah, yet you have people complaining constantly about needing to work to get ships. Oh crap, did I put on my helmet? I did, look at me. I did not get a multi-tool though, that was a really, really bad mistake on my part. Should have gotten myself a tractor beam. And I don't think they've added loot here too, wow. Big wowzers, right? Ow! Don't ruin the moment.
Alrighty. Let's get in there. Now, like I said, the goal here is to do a little bit of an investigation and find out what the heck went down when this, when this station had its little oopsie daisies. So you're going to be basically going around to different interactables. These are very much like scripted things. These aren't using game systems that they're making now. These are more of the bespoke things they used to make. But you're going around to these kind of computers and stuff and getting recordings and text logs, basically. Just wanted to follow up a bit on the distro issue. Helped you out a bit. Bye. Garnell, Racine again. Still need to sync up about the power distribution problem. Where are you, man? Getting tired of waiting, Darnell. Call me. Whoopsie, Darnell. So, Darnell is not doing his job, apparently. By the way, this is one of my favorite parts of this game. Uh, this is just natural, you know? Like, in a, in a set piece like this, in a game, this would 100% be staged, because you want to get the best view, yeah? But, like, it just so happens that this space station is in the proper orbit around the, the moon to have, like, this nice little partial eclipse going on. And that, that planet could be over here instead. And it could be half in shadow. And it could be even better looking than this. I just love that, like, when you're playing this game, it might be ugly. It might not. And because of that, whenever it's not ugly, you get to sit back and be like, okay, this game can look really good sometimes. I also don't think it's ever ugly. <laughs> it just sometimes doesn't look as good. It's a really good looking game, though. That's something that they've always had going for them. Uh, we continue down the hallways here. And this station isn't massive, but it does have a few different floors. So we'll be using the elevator shaft uh, to navigate between the different floors and find some more evidence. So let's head up a floor or two. Might actually have to cross over to the other elevator to get in there. Hello, Yasser. Does it actually orbit? Well, not orbit, but because the... I believe the space stations are geo-locked, geosynchronous to the moons. So because the moon is turning, technically the space station is like going around the body. It's just locked in place. All right, here's another little piece of evidence. Somebody's laptop. Find their porn logs. Come on, Darnell. Darnell. One more. Gosh, Darnell is too responsible. Just studying. Stupid little. No, keep it up, Darnell. You're doing good. Uh, let's see. Any more laptops in here? Maybe we can open this one. I like how this laptop's just locked shut. Never to be opened or used again. And this is where having a tractor beam would be useful because you can just navigate throughout here, grab some of these boxes and cans. Can I drink any of these? Are these like... I guess I can't take my helmet off. See, if this were a newer kind of thing, like a mission that they made now, these would be lootable. These would be interactable stuff. But you can tell this is a very old mission. Nothing is interactable in here except for the stuff meant for the mission. Like this. So when you see anything like this, you know it's something that you actually need to use. Let's see what this is. Uh, so this is a message from Dennis to Genevieve about door codes. He said, um, let's see. Do I want to 922, 922, 231. Okay, so we'll start from the bottom here. Hey, Dennis, I'm supposed to be packing up these habs, but can't seem to access one of the doors. The code on file isn't working. Did you change it? Jen. Dennis answered. Hey, Jen, whose hab is this? Dennis. Dennis answered. Or no, Jen answered. Melanie Ososki. Was that the girl who was like trying to get super drunk in the other thing? Finally, Genevieve 
Den Dennis came back to Jen saying, no, I haven't touched it. I checked with Ava though. She said to just leave it. Ososki isn't a person of interest in the investigation. Cleanup teams will reset the code when they sweep the station. So this isn't the people who were at the station before the accident. These are the people who were investigating what the heck happened. So this is after everything happened, it was added to this. Uh, they couldn't, I guess, get into the door. So maybe we need to figure out Believe it or not, I actually don't remember exactly how this goes. Don't tell me how this goes, please. I would like to work it through with you guys naturally. No evidence in here. I'm pretty sure I remember mostly, but uh, there are a couple things that are a bit... Whoa! Whoa! A bit fuzzy. Ow! God, EVA in this game is just awful right now. As am I. Which is a bad combo. Um, nothing here. I know these, I think it's this one. One of these also has, I know there's a little bit more I need to get from this hallway, but I might loop back around. Oh, here we go. This guy. Okay. So this is a security seal on Darnell's hab. This room has been sealed as a crime scene. All persons are forbidden to enter without express permission from lead investigator. Hey, lead investigator, can I go in the room? Can I get in? Let me hack it. You <laughs> feeling sick? Hmm. Okay. We'll loop back around to this room, and uh, if I can't figure it out, I will get some help. Oh! Why does that happen? So space, you are level-headed. Waffle. Nonsense. My head is off the rocker. What do I think about the whole Zeus thing? Do I really think they will be putting over, putting out over 15 ships at CitizenCon when historically they save those for IAE? I don't think... No, 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 no. So, when I say they've got over 15 ships in production, I don't think they're actually... Those are coming out at CitizenCon. That would be crazy. I think we'll get three ships max at CitizenCon. Um, 15 ships. Some of them won't even come out until the end of next year at the earliest. I think the Zeus is a thing. Uh, well, okay. I think something about the Zeus is a thing. I don't know if it's if it really means that it's going to be a, a ship in the game or a ship in an advertisement in the game or maybe a ship in i don't know anything like it could be anything yeah so i'm not sure if the zeus is going to be a ship in the game but i do think they're doing something with it but no i don't think there will be 15 ships in at citizen con did they fix the eva no not at all not yet just the transitions right now okay um here is some more data we found on a data pad from a Covalix employee. Looks like they got some notes on people. Ross Biolo has developed a strong rapport with haulers, which can be good and bad. Needs to make sure that professionalism isn't lost completely. Two citations this year for not properly logging crates. Needs to be more detail focused. One more strike. Does a lot to help maintain crew morale. Dan Darnell Ward. Was a little abrasive at first when he came back, but has settled back into a solid routine. Once in a while, still have to remind him about watching his attitude. Punctuality problems seem to have gone away, has been on time regularly for the past three months, keeps personal space clean, can sometimes be too diligent in trying to figure out a problem, overthinks things sometimes, which means tasks can take longer than expected. Also can lead to taking unnecessary risks. Uh-oh, Darnell. Very proactive, though, will address issues without needing to be told to do so. I don't know. Does that sound like the description of somebody who might uh, lead to a space station having a catastrophic accident? I feel like it's possible. Could be possible. Let's see. Let's continue. So we're just getting more information on this guy basically to figure out was he capable of being the problem that caused this space station to essentially blow up. I also like that we... We're getting a littlest, the littlest, tiniest bits of lore about 
like around the game itself you know getting to learn how a cargo based facility works granted part of that is because as star citizen players we are very much starved of content but i love world building in games throughout data pads and little pieces of lore you can find and details about some of the people who lived in that world that's really cool stuff it's like super important to the game in my opinion brian thank you for the kind words hope you're enjoying the stream Looks like uh, we can't access this screen. I want to put my fingers on it. There's got to be something in here, right? Whoa. Whoa. My knee. I used to be expl a space explorer like you, and then I took a, a ceiling lamp to my knee. How about this one? Can I log in here? New. All right. Let's take it out into the central area then get a little more chance to move around here this is also going to be not the last time they do a mission like this with eva2 coming out they're gonna want to start doing missions that highlight the push and pull technology and make you and, and force you to make choices between using your multi-tool your eva thrusters or your push and pull so i think we'll see more of these kind of zero g platforming missions coming sooner than later at least if i <laughs> if i was them that's what i would be thinking not only do you want to make missions that take advantage of that after hyping up EVA T2 so much, you also kind of want to make sure that just natural times, natural occurrences in the game force people to make in the hard decision of using push and pull. But like, where the heck? Man, I am not finding any more. I, I got to get up to the server room. We need to get back to the elevator. Ow! God. Okay, let's go this way. Good idea for a stream. This feels like more substantial content than Starfield usually presents. <laughs> I do like this mission. It feels a little bit more engaging than the rest of the missions we have. Unfortunately, it's very rare to get a mission like this in Star Citizen. Here we go. Okay, so... We got something. I think we can get some more information here. Uh, these are server archives. So it looks like we've just got system checks going on. Electrical, life support, pressure, data, scanner. Electrical, life support, pressure, data, scanner. They just keep checking, making sure it's good. Run protocol, electrical, life support, pressure, data, scanner. Running, running, running. It looks like everything goes silent here. Run protocol, all monitor silence. Authorization, D Ward. So it looks like Mr. Ward silenced all system checks. Power system overheated. Electrical system failed. That's, that doesn't sound great. That doesn't sound like a good thing. Is there anything else up here? Maybe like a voice ow jesus it was melted into the floor oh what's this hey race it's darnell <laughs> where the hell have you been your shift started three hours ago i know sorry i did a breakdown of the current power flow for the station and it's looking like i'll need to run a stress test on the whole system to see where the runoff is uh, okay Hey, just be careful. Will do. I'll keep a close eye on it. Sounds good. You sure you're okay? You sound terrible. Yeah. It was Scott's birthday last night, so we were all up a little later than we should have been. Uh-oh, Darnell. All right. What happened to I'm responsible Darnell? Test. Will do. Okay. So, he was running a power test. So, it's not like he just straight shut it off. Maybe made a little oopsie. We got, we got it. There's something else. Oh my God. <laughs> there's, there's something else we got to find here. What mission is this? This is called PI Wanted. It occurs in the Crusader space. Anybody can get it. I think it's a great first beginner's mission. Pretty much no danger. Still pretty interesting. Narratively dense. Yeah, darn. I'll be slipping. I am located in the US right now, but we're back and forth. 
not necessarily between the EU and the US, but between Europe and the US. We live in Turkey half the year. Not an EU country, but it is European. And also Asian. And also Middle Eastern. It's a lot of things. And also Mediterranean. A lot of ways to label that place. But right now we're in the US. We're in California. Maybe he was up all night silencing the systems. I think I already got this, right? Uh, yeah, these are the notes. Okay, I'm just double checking everything, making sure we got all the information we need. See, and this is another thing about this mission that I like, that I hope they stick with. You don't get an objective complete for this for this mission. You don't get a, oh, good job, pat you on the back, you got all of the stuff. You're just supposed to figure it out yourself, come to your own conclusion, go to the mission manager. I said the mission manager, not the app. Don't piss me off. Go to the mission manager. And you just hit the, you can't even see it. You hit the submit button down here in the corner and that's it. This isn't like a, you hit a, you hit a certain point and you get your money. So this also is kind of what it sounds like they're doing to move forward with investigation missions. Last year at the design brief, they talked about how it's supposed to be more about you kind of coming to the conclusion that of completing objectives. And I think this mission is kind of their, their uh, template for that. So if you want to get a good idea of how investigation will work in the game, this is also a great opportunity. If you're better than me at it, I cannot find the last data that I want, though. We don't have our conclusion. Okay, I'm going to hit the server room and then I'm going to do that second hallway one more time to cover my tracks. Don't tell me yet how to do it. Let me run through this a couple of times and make sure I've exhausted all of my avenues. And it's interesting that that monitor doesn't have anything else on it here. Ow. Ow. Wasn't there meant to be an update? Yes, that's what I heard. But I haven't seen anything yet. There's nothing on these, like, server stacks. Oh my god. Oh my god. The freaking... I can't wait for the new EVA. <laughs> ah, here we are. There we go. That's what we're looking for. See? Anything that looks out of place is going to be on the mission. Okay. Ava sent a message to Dennis. Hi, Ava. Oh, sorry. Dennis sent it to Ava. Hi, Ava. I went through the data logs from the server and managed to put together a rough timeline for events that led up to the crash. This is the Kovalix investigation, so this is after the fact. I know the initial speculation was criminal sabotage, but based on this, it looked like worker negligence, sad as it is, sad as it is to say. Anyway, I've attached a series of files to help illustrate my points, and so you don't have to sift through them a million lines of data text. Excerpt 1 attached. I've pulled together some sample readings from the power distribution logs. As you can see, over the past year, the station has been suffering from sporadic power drains. Maintenance reports theorized that there was a power drain somewhere, but to me, it looks like faulty switchers. These 2920s, these 2920s were notorious for power flow issues. Can we stop real quick? Uh, and, and talk about how this paragraph almost could... This is speculation. This is Space Tomato speculation hat being put on. I feel like this is a little bit insight into resource management missions. Not because they meant for it to be. This was made way before resource management was a thing. But because going to space stations and fixing power problems seems like exactly the kind of thing that they've talked about for a mission that would require resource management. Because it's not just for ships. It's for outposts, cities, space stations, and other little points of interest. What else could it be used for than things like this? It's another thing I like. When you're reading lore and you see things that could happen to you happen in the lore. You were talking about Turkey? I was talking about Turkey, yes. I see you have TR in your name. Are you from there? Live maintenance is due soon for the servers. Okay. I think Space Station Engineer will be something that you get to kind of do occasionally. 
Nice, you're from Turkey. We actually have a few people from Turkey who come through the stream pretty often. Come fr from Turkey or are Turkish. Including Mrs. Tomato, believe it or not. Kind of our thing. Excerpt 2. So here is the initial stress test that Darnell Ward ran the day of the incident. Everything after run protocol stress test 3 is, is test taking effect. Everything looks good, right? Then, and I haven't figured out why yet, but a few hours later in the middle of the stress test, he runs this, all monitor silence. We saw that in the uh, recovered data. Maybe he was trying to bring monitoring systems offline to see if they were causing the drain. I don't really know. Anyways, it was a stupid move because he basically removed his only way to see that the power plant was about to go critical. Ooh, I'll keep digging and keep you appraised. So he was just trying to figure out the problem they were running into. I guess he, it sounded like he was a little bit hungover and maybe not doing the best job of doing what he meant to do. But then he silenced them and did not realize that they were having another power surge. Ruined the system, blew up the whole station, killed all the people. So he didn't do it on purpose, which I mean, I guess is something that you probably want to tell insurance. So he's not like a criminal or something, but he was definitely the cause for this. Either way, I think we've got our conclusion, folks. If we're done running into the wall over and over again, uh, let's send our evidence into her. I would say that was pretty good. Would you say that? Is that a conclusion? Did we did we figure things out? This is a that was a lot of evidence. I don't know why they didn't just give her this evidence, but let's see what she has to say about it. I wanted to let you know that I have received the information you sent and will be uploading the payment to your account. <gasps> I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You guys are right. I knew how hard that struggle was, but I guess... You're right, I didn't finish it. Oh, that sounded like a really disappointed conclusion. Okay, so... I guess that's actually a great way to do this. I did not complete the whole mission there. And that was one of the alternate voice uh, answers you could get. She did not include any extra money for the additional um, evidence that I got. And obviously she was not very happy. <laughs> Which, you know, like I said, if that was what you found out about it and he caused the whole thing, you'd probably be pretty sad. So now let's see if I can still go and get the other stuff. And like call her back. Hey, so remember how I said your <laughs> Remember how I said your husband got all those people killed? Turns out. And um I guess that actually kind of works out for any of you who are watching this video and didn't want to get the ending spoiled for you. Now you can go do it yourself and see what the real ending is. But who killed the station? Let's see if we can get back into those apartments. Or those uh those habs and get the rest of the info wherever that is this is server room oh man I am getting turned around okay back ow god Only got 8k for the initial 9k mission. Was it 9k? I thought it was 8. Ow. Ow. I'm so confused. I'm on the second floor. This should be the... <sighs> this should be the floor with our Habs, no? Am I getting... I'm getting wildly turned around. Let me... Oh, here we go. Yeah, I am on the wrong floor. I'm getting super confused. I'm getting lost here. Okay, this is the server floor. No, this is the hab floor. Okay. Weird, but sure. I'll, I'll take it. Alright, let's get into these rooms. Let's see what else we can find in here. Since we did not finish our job as proper private investigators. I obviously wouldn't be very good at the investigation missions. Shame on me. Truly. 
Okay, so we got both of these drops of data. We can't open the doors. Um, let's see if there's anything else on this computer that might help us out. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I don't want it. We already... We went through this. Stop playing. Stop it. Cancel. Stop listening. Alexa, stop listening. Please. Cut it. Uh, okay. Hmm. Uh, what is the mission? We're trying to... Shut up. We're trying to... <laughs> We're trying to prove this guy's innocence in causing the explosion of this station and the death of multiple people. But... Retrieve data. Why did they seal these rooms? Ventilation shaft for the locked rooms? Uh, I don't think so. Haven't touched it. These are door codes. Did you change the door code? Hmm. not in here hey let me look in my well there's nowhere to even put a door code in is kind of the the thing that's annoying me so if if there was a place to put a number i would at least know i had a note all oh, right i can't even oh maybe that's why because i finished the mission Personal life policy. No, this is just life insurance information. Don't temper with the door. Here's a message. And this is the investigation update. Wow. Wow. If you found a specific thing you could just open the door it might be that i can't do it anymore because i finished the mission but there is more information to be found in here either way i think we spent enough time on this mission so let's get back to our ship and start on the next one yeah let's okay okay all right relax oh my god <laughs> just let me go please This is miserable. You can get loot off of them. And we're free! Yes! Alright. Where is our ship though? There it is. Okay. On to the next one. Love some smooth EVA transitions. Now he must do outsourcing opportunity, meet Constantine. I'm not going to send new players to a mission giver first. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to do a search mission. Because I think this is something that... Well, let's see. Uh, remove from the rec site. Blah, blah, interest of parties. Recommend that you proceed with caution. No, actually, I would not send a new player here. I'd send them to go get a delivery mission. So let's take this one on and see what it does. The box delivery mission. My next suggestion. And this you can do at any planet. You don't have to go to a specific one to complete that. Okay. 
don't like that. Looks like we got a little bit of a battle going on over here. Y'all need some help? We're just out here investigating, but I can investigate the hull of a nice pirate too, see if I can put some holes in it for you. See what we can do to help. There you go. Cheers now, buddy. Just help him do the lowest work. That's right now, the Lord has preordained me with the lasers. And he said, let there be lasers. Jamel. If you do two, you can get the pickup missions. Do two what? Investigations? Is that a buck? Uh-oh. Looks like he's targeting us now. I thought you were fighting. I thought you were busy, dude. I'm just here to kind of troll you a little bit. We don't need all that. No, can I not? Oh! Wait, collect a box from Kovalik Station Gundo. Are you for real? Like the station we just left? Yeah, why would I get the box from there? Isn't that station basically broken? Broke in half? Am I mistaken? Uh, why is it... <laughs> Never interfere in another battles. I mean, if they're NPCs, you just come and go as you please. Yeah, it's supposed to be at the Gundo station. All right, let's see if we can find this box then. Interesting. Love a mission in two, uh, two missions in the same location. Back into the mall we go. Because we had so much fun before. Alright. We saw where these boxes were. They were the ones we kind of ran into before that I said would be a place for other missions. There's like four missions you can do simultaneously here. I guess that makes sense. It would, like, Kovalix having a bunch of people's boxes and stuff is kind of their job. Oh! The other boxes that were here disappeared. Ow! Collect box number 510. Is this not number 510? Oh, this is number 104. So we're going to have to find another box in here somewhere. Okay, now that was some pretty smooth EVA. I dig that. Nice, and a full transition into the ship. Beautifully done. Okay, let's put this first box down. Maybe we can find whatever mission corresponds to this one too. Just drop it. And back in we go. Wonder if they will have changed the destination for them. Some were destined for Grimhex, some were destined for Port Alisar. 
This one's going to uh, Seraphim, the one we're looking for. Ow! Just broke my neck. Have I gone in here? Holy crap, I have not gone in here. What is this? What did I miss? Hab door codes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Freaking of course. How did I find this so easily? 6682 is what we wanted. God dang it. I found that no problem after we were not on the mission. Also, I think this is an extra room that I missed. No, I, I got this room. Yeah, I just flying through the front entrance, that's why. Ma'am, can I call you back, please? I found something else. Your son's door access code. Like, I haven't actually found anything else yet. Is there a box in here? Y'all got any boxes? Any boxes? No boxes at all. Actually, it'd be really cool if she was just like a contact on your Moby Glass and you could actually call her back and give her more info if you decided to follow up. Ow. Ooh. Have I... I don't think I was down here either. There's another hall of... Nope, this is the same one. Although now we can get in. No, I guess I can just open the door. No? I still can't just open the door. How about the other one? No. It's not that easy. Hmm. Nope. Well, let's continue looking for boxes. I think maybe the central chamber is probably going to have something. That's how the universe works when you look for stuff. Woody Bear, what's up? You and Supposit play together? You know each other? Alright, any boxes in here? There's our entrance. There's a central shaft in the middle. I don't see anything in there. Yeah, you can't sub submit fresh info, which kind of sucks. Nothing there. Nothing there. It'd be cool if all this stuff was lootable. With the cargo system. Man, I don't see any boxes anywhere in any of these rooms. Has much changed in Star Citizen since you played? When's the last time you played the game? Oh, you guys just greet each other? Well, that's nice. I mean, I like to think that this stream is somewhere where people can run into the same folks over and over and eventually actually know them. That's my goal. No boxes. Been like eight months since you played. So 318. Did you play in 318? Or you played 317? I'm about to give up on this box, lady. I don't know what the heck you had that you were shipping, but I can't imagine it's this important. I can't even get into the doors. It's so confusing. 
I'm sure somebody is watching this after the fact and they're probably like, you are really dumb. You keep flying past whatever you need. 317 was the last time you played. There's been some stuff added since then. Some decent stuff. Salvages in the game. Everything persists. Uh, some new ships, like the whole sea. Some ground vehicle improvements. Some new missions. I come on. Uh, we can now remove and uh, change out our components in a lot of the ships. It's like your tractor beam can now rip components out. You can now interact with cargo off of ships. Cargo that you've bought, cargo that you've found. You can steal it, put it on your own, sell it. All that kind of stuff. You can move mining bags so you can replace them out of your mining ships. Mining itself has also gotten a big rebalance. So there's a lot of features there. The racing profession is in game. A lot more missions with that. Uh, they've diversified the ship combat. So there's more NPCs to fight. They redid Loreville. That looks nice. Nothing too crazy, but it looks nice. Stability is still around the same as it was in 317, which I think is good considering the amount of backend stuff that has changed, but uh, you're not going to find it to have gotten much better. Hmm. FPS is better though because Gen 12 came in and changed up how things render. So the game does ultimately run better on PCs than it used to. Yeah, Port Alistar has been changed, and Arena Commander got a big update with a lot of content in it. Ow! Decent amount of changes for a year, but definitely not the most changes we're going to see. I'm about to give up on this box, to be honest, guys. We got more missions to go through, and this is it's not here. I've looked through... Oh. I hope that wasn't my ship. I mean, I've looked through this whole place. Uh, he was on going to station. Mom says that we need to wait until Kovalik says so. Box five ten. I wonder if it was in his in his um hab. The box is not tracked. No, you have to find it in this station. Oh my god. Oh my god. I feel like it's got to be in one of these halves that I can't seem to get into for whatever reason. Where else would it be? If this dude lived here when this, the thing went down there's a good chance that like one of these rooms was his and he just had the box in there with him or maybe not with him but I can't get in Come on. There is a box in the cargo area in the upper right when you go in. In that first room? Let's see if that's where it is. You just posted on your second channel. What is this magic? I did not post on my second channel. Earlier I did, but uh, no. Not right now. Hey, what's that? Data. Executives only. To members of the executive team, I am in the process of preparing a complete summary, but wanted to give you a high-level overview of our findings. It suffered a catastrophic system overload, which triggered an explosion that resulted in the deaths of 16 employees. Oof. Initial investigation into the station's server logs found that one of the maintenance workers had been running space stress tests throughout the day to address a power runoff issue. Um, station systems went critical without the local failsafes and an explosion was inevitable. 
Reviewing his file indicated that he's had an addiction issue in the past and has even been suspended previously for negligence. Those superior reviews indicated he's cleaned up since re his return. Our team found evidence that he slipped back into his bad habits shortly before the accident. To perform our due diligence, we've exhausted other potential causes, but this one seems to be the most likely. As I mentioned, I'm still compiling my final report, which you will have when I make my presentation to the board. Okay. So that's their conclusion. That doesn't help us with our box, though. Easy to blame the worker. I mean, he was hung over. And he did trigger the explosion. Yeah, this is now the oldest space station in game since Korea has gotten its updates. All right, maybe... Oh, my ship is still good. Oh, no, my ship is... No, my ship's still good. Is it? I can't even tell, actually. It looks like it might be dead. Yeah, my ship's blown up. Yep. So we can't even complete the mission, unfortunately. What the heck did it get blown up by? An NPC pirate, I guess? Weird that they'd spawn out here. Okay. Well, then, screw this mission. I could care less. I'm over it. So that's a mission that I probably won't tell you to do if you are a newcomer. I'll tell you to just go do the normal box missions. Maybe the NPC I shot at earlier came back to find me. Don't get involved in other people's fights. You end up losing. Okay, we are back at our corp, so we can continue our missions on like the normal place that I would tell people to continue them. Really, I went to co to uh, I went to Crusader just to show you that one mission with the voice acting. Let's get on with some of the other ones though. Nice hair. And I'm going to head up to our cargo center here just to get our tractor beam. Everything's easier with the tractor beam. Hand mining is truly the best for newcomers. Oh, there's no mission for that, but maybe I'll bring some of that with us. Hey, what do you know? My death counter doesn't work. Just like every other day. Tractor beam. Check. And I'll grab a mining attachment just in case. For that very reason, how about we just get some armor in a backpack as well? A newcomer can absolutely buy this stuff, so I'm not gonna... It's not like this is pricing you out of these missions or something. I think your starting money is like 20000 So, you'll be able to get this. And if you can't, uh, I do have a referral code that you can use. JoinTomato.com will take you to our referral code randomizer. Where you can use a, one of many referral codes that point back to one of our supporters. And uh, you both... We'll get a little bit extra money for the game. Your computer also runs 20% faster. It'll download like 16 extra gigas of RAM to your computer if you use that site. So, you know, try it out. Oh, I don't want to bring a gun with me. 
I actually don't want to lose any of these guns. I really like them. So I guess... Is the patch cancelled? Sounds like it's been delayed. Send this to our backpack. Get us a couple bottles of water. Don't mess with the water. And then I'll grab one more multi-tool just in case. But they don't have any guns here. Do they have any med pens? No med pens. Found that pink bear mask too, and an NPC ran into you when you were taking it to the station. You found the pink bear mask? Is it stunning? Is it fabulous? Buy a box? My problem with buying the boxes is that you can't get any, you can't put any weapons in them. Which is kind of my only reason for getting a box, you know? I don't want to loot anything else. How much money do I even have? Oof. I'm falling, I'm dropping. Happy Star Citizen B Day to you, Tom. How you doing today? Hope everybody's having a lovely day. Welcome to the ASOP vehicle retrieval system. Jerk Style Wiz, thank you for the subscription over on Twitch. Twitch has been lovely with the support today. I am doing well. Thank you so much for asking. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you're enjoying the stream. What were we in before, Pisces? Uh, let's continue it, I guess. Let's just grab another one of the Pisces. Yeah, you can't buy the one SCU boxes, which sucks. And you know what I think? I'm going to go ahead and call this, but I'm actually going to go back to the med center and grab some medical pens, because I think we can all see the future when I'm bleeding out and I have nothing to heal with. Let's avoid that. Had a little hope up for CIGB day. What do you think they're going to do today for their birthday? They're almost, Star Citizen's almost a teenager. Medical concerns got you worried? Forget that stress, just relax. Everyone Medical concerns got you worried. The F8C Lightning. Do a box mission before a bunker and grab a couple blue loot boxes to take with you in the bunker. I mean, you can get a 1 8th SCU box at this cargo station. That's not the hard part. It's the 1 SCU box that we want. Alright, so we got a shipment lost. A very important shipment was attacked on its way to Area 18. Need someone to go to the last point of contact, retrieve the shipment of ore samples. The job will be bonded through Kovalix. Sounds pretty simple. This is a search mission. This is the kind of thing that you can do as a newcomer. Let's go see what it includes. We are headed off to find this missing box. It got attacked and left behind in space or on a station. Not really sure. Or in space or on a planet. Make sure we're tracking the right thing though. For their birthday, they will find a way to sell something. Yeah, well, that's inevitable. It was a lie. He posted a fake picture. What? Who posted a fake picture? Oh, Salty Mike posted on Twitter. <laughs> What exactly is Death of a Spaceman? Haven't heard about that in a long time. Death of a Spaceman is a mechanic basically meant to add um, value to lives, but not to make them count too much. So you essentially get multiple lives for every actual life. Um, we don't know what the number will be yet. It'll probably be balanced and changed throughout time. I'm thinking it'll be somewhere between 6 and 10, but who knows. You'll have these lives to go through. And these will be basically any time you respawn in the game right now is a life. That will become continuously harder and harder to do 
as the injury and medical system comes more online, so you'll worry less about dying. More about getting injuries or getting stranded. But when you do die, either by getting blown up or hit by a railgun or something catastrophically damaging to your body, you lose one of those mini lives. Now you can do things to extend those mini lives, to gain the lives back, to um, add more on and all that kind of stuff. But generally, once you run out of those six to ten lives or however many, however many they give us, your character is done. It's dead. It's gone. It is ruined. And you will be forced to use the um, like an offspring or a um, benefactor you. from your family of that same person. So they'll look kind of similar. They'll have a lot of the reputation of your character. They'll have all of the money of your character. They'll have all the ships and belongings, the apartments, the uh, components, all that stuff that you built up throughout the course of your first character will move down to your second character. But you'll deal with some of that kind of difficulty of inheritance. There'll be an inheritance tax. You'll probably lose some of the reputation. Maybe you'll get taxed in your bank account. All that kind of stuff will take effect. So it's meant to draw a lot more importance to life and make you think more about it without ruining your time if you do end up dying. And it's a concept right now. It's still not in the game. They still have to develop the technical design for it and how it's actually going to work in the game. So I would hold off until they start talking more about it before we kind of get our pitchforks and say it's not going to work. They're going to have to balance it to work for the game that they're building, so... I'm sure they're very wary of how dangerous it could be. The thing about Death of a Spaceman being dangerous because of all the murder hobos is that the murder hobos are going to be the ones who are dying more. All of those people who are putting themselves at risk also have to deal with Death of a Spaceman. Hey, no problem, Static. There's also a video on my channel that talks about Death of a Spaceman, but I will likely do an update next couple years sometime. Yeah, they're not going to implement this before the game is running a lot better, obviously. You don't want to randomly lose your very valuable lives to a, me I don't know, a medical gun flipping off the shelf and glitching through your body. There's also, like, the bounty system, as people are saying. There's the law system, the reputation system. For people who are murder hobos, you're going to get to the point where you do enough that you can't even walk into the terror system without getting targeted. So, yeah, you might be a pirate or you might be an outlaw. You might, you know, kill a bunch of people and have a lot of fun. But at the end of the day, the game systems are going to make it a little bit harder for you to get to the place where those people hang out. Which is why... Once Pyro is in game for a little while and people get used to being there, there will probably be more pirates in Pyro than in Stanton. But the pirates who are in Stanton will probably be better because they're the more skilled one. It's kind of like a filter, you know? Cutting off the cream of the crop. Reputation does make the game, which worries me a little bit that we don't see anything on Citizen Con that obviously points to reputation. But I'll wait to hear what they have to say. The missions team isn't going to Citizen Con and they're in charge of the reputation system. So that also might be a little bit of a uh oh <laughs> on that regard. But this they also they know how important reputation is. And I really hope that they deliver it to us. Karmic joke. Thank you for the sub. Sixteen months now, fourteen month streak, dude. <laughs> really appreciate your support. Thanks for being here. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Um, I'm going to let you guys watch as I fly over this this moon. And I'll be back in a couple more minutes yet again. Sorry.
Alrighty. I probably <laughs> flew so far past where we were supposed to be going. There is a difference between murder hobos and pirates. I know I keep on kind of drawing an equivalency between them. Uh, probably <laughs> both today and yesterday. But there is a difference between them. They all are related in some way. But like... When it comes down to it, if a, if a murder hobo is killing somebody for a good reason, then like it's legitimate. And I think the people who are doing that kind of thing are going to survive better in Pyro because obviously you have less authorities and, and people who are against that. Um, but I also think that the people who are good at pirates, who want to make the most money, are going to have the best opportunities in Stanton. And those who are really good or are running in good gangs are going to be the only ones who can survive in Stanton with all the bounty hunters. Because remember, with 4.0, it's also looking like bounty hunting is getting an update. So everybody is going to want to be doing bounty hunting as their gameplay, which means that pirates are going to have more people after them. Are Pyro and Terra coming out together? No, I highly doubt that. All the toxicity on Spectrum is from the Care Bears. I find that to be false. I find there to be toxicity coming from all sides of every argument in Star Citizen. Just depends on who's making the statement first. Hey, we've been here before. <laughs> we've been to this crashed ship before. I'm pretty sure there are... There's definitely an Aurora down there. I'm pretty sure there are NPCs here. So let's be careful. Let's be wary. I'm going to park on this side over closer to the cargo. Give myself a little bit of cover. Landing gear raised. I don't feel like I'm flat. No, we're not going to be able to open the ramp like this. Let's... There we go. Better. You just got a Toby eye tracker. Y'all think it's worth the price? I love mine. I think it really depends on where you are in your computer build. It's definitely a later stage upgrade, but it's something that I think a lot of people will benefit from if they grab one. Yeah, I don't have any guns. Hopefully, hopefully there's nobody here. It's actually a really cool looking scene, to be honest. Like, it lays out quite well here. On the ranking, there are sensitive arguments about the Middle East, OJ Simpson, then there are Star Citizen. What? Sometimes there are guns on the ground. Yeah, that's that could help. Maybe we'll find some good loot here. There's a black box. That would be for another mission if you had to come and get the flight recorder for this crash, but uh, we are here for cargo. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, so there's definitely people here. Let's grab the box and get gone. I am not trying to get shot. So this is how easy it is to do. If you are a newcomer in one of these missions, you could come, grab the box, and get out of here. Or you can go and kill those people who I just heard on the other side of that door, grab their loot, take their stuff. Uh, you also saw that there was a flight recorder box in there, so like you might have a mission here that requires you to come get the black box. And in my opinion, that should be the case for every derelict there is in the game should have all of these separate things spawning at it so that you can always run any mission, but for now, this is the Caterpillar. Honestly, the, the amount of feeling people have about Star Citizen is pretty surprising, especially because a lot of the people who feel very strongly about this game at least at, at, at face value, seem to have nothing to do with it. So like most of the time, if you see like a post by IGN or something about this game, a lot of the people who talk about it don't have anything actually going on with it. Like they're not, 
They're not like expressing their anger about a change or, or talking about something they're excited about. Generally, they're talking about like the time it's taken or the money it's taken. It's like, well, what about the rest of the... What about the rest of the people who actually like care about the game? And away we go. We got a delivery to make. Dropping off this ore selection. You can stack missions if you pay attention to the locations. Yes, you can. And it's a very good tip to have. Need to remember where the codes are on the Discord. I always forget. For the giveaways? Next code will be coming probably on like the 17th. Hello, Skippy. One of our mods. How you doing, dude? Also a uh, an Onion supporter on YouTube and a Toes Gang member, I see. How's it going, man? You've had a game package since 2014, only recently started playing. Wish you had started sooner? Honestly, I'm jealous of people who start later. The later you start, the better the game is. But it is really cool to get to like play every iteration as the game is built. It's annoying right now with the delays and stuff, but I think with hindsight later on when the game is more complete, it's going to be something to look back on for those who were here while the game was built. Be like, holy crap, I remember when every one of these things was added. I still remember when the ability to buy ships was added or send money or land on planets. The ability to track your face. And now we have like the ability to pick up cargo with the tractor beam was this year. And I think we'll all remember that. Look for supporter alert, Swaffle. You upgraded your motherboard, CPU, RAM, GPU, and monitor. So just in this last month, you bought joysticks and an eye tracker. Wow. Yes, you had a you had everything you needed. I would say maybe to get before that would be Hotas, but I would suggest trying with oh you you bought the Hotas or the joysticks. I'd also suggest learning mouse and keyboard first, just so you know it. But yeah, you got a good setup. Congratulations. Hyped to meet all your friends in LA. Skippy, you know how many people you are personally planning on meeting when you go? How many folks you know you'll you'll see there? Jim, you started in January. You were waiting for scraping and crafting. They added one part. And that is why you got in. Man, when crafting is in this game, everything changes, right? I remember Levski. Didn't they just remove something else? Everybody's going to be able to kind of talk about. Um, oh, Port Olisar. There's another thing that's always going to be able to be referred to. Because you were part of it right now, as opposed to just playing the game. <laughs> Vultures have crafting. Why does it look like we're dropping the ores off? I mean, I guess we're going to have to go and land at the spaceport, which... Are we over the spaceport? This looks like it right here. No, this is the city. These are the city blocks. Spaceport is... Um... There's the spaceport. Can be kind of hard to tell. Ah, uh, the frame rate. Come on, Pisces, you can pull it. You can pull it off. Well done, Pisces. Good job, good job. 
the aerodynamics of this ship are not very forgiving. For like, I mean, it's kind of an airplane looking ship, but also at the same time not. So I get it. Not as nice to fly as like in a 100i or something. Which is actually kind of the same shape. But also kind of not. Sometimes these delivery missions will require you to go to space stations. Sometimes they'll take you to uh, shipyards. Sometimes they'll take you to, um, gosh, like uh, wreck yards or whatever they're called. Places where there's a bunch of trash. Sometimes an outpost. This time it has me making the delivery to a city. And as time goes on, they'll diversify the locations. They'll add underground facilities. They'll add different types of buildings. Whoa. Different locations in different cities, all kinds of stuff. Do you think we'll see the Odyssey this year? I don't think so. I don't think the Odyssey is really something they're all that interested in delivering right now. Lovely frame rates. I'm looking for the C1 Spirit as well. The C1 Spirit is what I'm going to be doing these kinds of missions in once it comes out. And probably no other ship. That's going to be the first ship that I keep up to date with components, I think. Just want the Tumbral Rangers. A little while longer for that. They got to figure out how to do the two wheeled vehicles well. And probably in a full time, in a, in a full system as opposed to just for that vehicle so that they can add more motorcycles later. Do you think we're going to get Pyro and Nyx at the same time? I think Nyx has been done for a long time in terms of the planet content, but we don't really know about the factions or the missions or and that stuff, right? Maybe they would add an empty Nyx alongside a full Pyro, but I don't know. I doubt it. Nope. We want, I always go to the wrong train. We want this train to get back into the city. And in the meantime, let me update my death counts because my stream deck, <laughs> guess what, isn't working. I am surprised. Put that on eight patch deaths and 177 total deaths. Not bad. How long has it been since I started tracking that? Was that this January or last January? You'd love if they released a full list of professions they are planning on adding in the game. I got you, Looking Glass. Not only will I show you that list, I will also give you the link. Boop boo. So all this information is online. This is where a lot of my video content comes from. And while a lot of it is outdated, it does point towards what they're trying to do in terms of intent. So you can scroll through all of these documents and see a lot of stuff from passenger transport to cargo to ship mass, to repair and maintenance. But they also have here a list of the careers and the roles in those careers. So they've got combat, transport, exploration, industrial support, and competition focused career paths. You got a ship chart that shows the different roles per career. Fighters, interdiction, dropship, bombers. Industrial has mining, salvage, science, agriculture. And like I said, this is outdated. This has expanded since then, but it does give you some idea of where they're going with it. And then at the end of it, they have this uh, this sort of PowerPoint, this visual guide that gives you like additional pictures and, and text for that. I'll drop this link for you and you can kind of explore this as well as some of the other panels and links they've got there. Okay, and the page is dead. <gasps> oh no, get out. Oh, we're glitched. There you go.
What's my favorite city in the game? Orison. I like Orison the most. I think I like uh, Lorville the least, I think. Look at how, look at like This is what always gets me a little bit weird. Why am I doing all of this manual labor just to get a single box of minerals to this city center when we have like full meal or uh full moles and prospectors hauling thousands of kilograms of minerals around the system. Like, I need more story to make this box delivery make sense. That's where I need narrative team to, to kick in here. It's also a weird place that I'm dropping this off, but... Is it inside of the Habs building? I think it is. I do like that this gets me into the city again. Like, we do need plenty of reasons to go into the city. So, more of this, but just explain it a little bit. We need quests so when you drop boxes you get another part of the mission. That's actually one of the goals of the module system they've been working on with missions. So that if you complete one module, another one will get triggered and start up. So maybe we drop off the mission, but or we drop off the box, but then we get the realization that like part of the shipment was stolen, and so now we have an assassination mission that's attached to it. Then you have to gear up to go assassinate somebody. Got to get a whole new team of people. Suddenly the mission is expanding into like a storyline for you. Give me it. Please. Okay, so that's another mission complete. And now we're back home so we can get really anything we need. But since we're playing as newcomers, I won't go too crazy. I'm just going to grab us a pistol, I would say. We'll grab the arc light pistol. And I'll throw another pistol in my backpack for like a just in case. I don't think I have ammo for it. Okay. Let's go and take a search mission. No. Mercenary mission. Uh, like was suggested in chat, I do want to try and get a cave mission of some sort, but I don't see any popping up here. We got a retrieval op. So this is grab packages from somewhere. No, I'm in the PU right now. Personal? I don't think personal has the cave stuff. Let's see if there's any bounties in a cave. This is one of those ones that says it's in a cave, but then says you need to fly a small ship. Uh, Hurston Dynamics. No. Assist in the apprehension of K. Immel Immelman from a cave on Microtech. Why do I have to go to Microtech? Do we fly to Microtech for the cave bounty? What do you say? You haven't done a rescue in a while. I haven't done a cave rescue in a long time either. I don't even know if they work anymore. I'm just not so sure it's worth flying all the way across system. Like that's the last thing I want to tell newcomers to do is to fly across system. Uh, that's something that this game should be focusing on making sure isn't the reality of the game. But, 
why don't we go ahead and do it? I've got an upgraded MSR, so I think we can get there a little bit faster. Mission taking us all across the system. All right. We'll take it. Cave on, Microtech. Let's go. In that case, I am going to bring one extra gun. And to be honest, as a newcomer, you can unlock a rifle pretty quickly. So I'm not going to... I wouldn't call this a... You'll do okay. This isn't going to leave you in the dust, me getting this gun. Also going to make sure we have some ammo. My FPS is horrible in the city right now. So that hasn't really changed. Okay, we get some arc light ammo and a couple magazines for the P4AR. And when I say a couple, I mean 11. You want actual exploration missions? What would you say that would consist of, Woody Bear? Hope in the future finding caves will be easier. So do I. I really, 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 really do hope that very soon, like in the next year, we have the ability to scan for points of interest. We have mineable rocks. We have salvageable ships. We have live ships. Uh, we have cargo boxes. And we have things like turrets. But we don't have, like, points of interest. Space stations derelict space stations, derelict spaceships, outposts, caves, rivers, even like probably like an outcropping or, or mountain. Like it'd be great if this game had a system that identified anything weird that the procedural planetary system did and named it so that we could also kind of find that if we're scanning too. How cool would it be to, to, to scan a planet that's covered in clouds and be able to find the highest mountain peak? and know where it is and like save that location and sell it to some touring companies so that they could take their people around there and uh, get some cool views. Don't forget to buy a tractor beam. I've got one. I should have one. Got one on my trusty hip. And I got one in my backpack. In my old backpack. A couple box missions you can afford almost any gun. Yeah, or even just the starting money you get. You remember your first day in the verse? Flew your Aurora across Stanton to meet up with two friends and hit the ground going Mach 2. Good times. You like fleshed out exploration? Like you have to find clues, find outposts, explore them, interact with people, maybe do missions for them as well find treasure on the way and just explore so like you're talking about finding more mission givers like finding additional mission givers when you're running missions sort of thing isn't that what explorer and pathfinder will kind of have going for it it is but we don't know the technical details like, how, how much will you be able to specifically save as data in the game? Is it just waypoints? Is it features? Kinto, thanks for the, for the uh, Prime sub. Much love for the support. Hope you're enjoying the stream. I hope you're here for the stream. Finding ancient artifacts and completing puzzles. Well, you can find artifacts in Stanton, but uh, <laughs> obviously the mechanics don't make that very fun. I have seen the Citizen Con schedule, yes. We discussed it yesterday. Uh, I should have a video coming out of that discussion later today. Okay, like I said, we're going to take a faster ship this time. What is tomorrow's future? 
vehicle has been delivered to the Why do you have to say stuff like that, R-Corp? What? Investing in tomorrow's future? Why can't you just say investing in the future? Is that too easy? Too simple to just invest in the future. We must go further. We must go higher. We must invest in tomorrow's future. The future's future. We love future future. Yo, dog. I heard you like planning. So I put a future in your future. So you can anticipate while you anticipating. Making points and sending the data to others for cost is surely to be a thing. Yeah. But will they just be a data point or can you... What I think of when I was with my specific example I gave, I was thinking of Prometheus. Uh, first scene, Prometheus arriving on the planet. They're flying down through the clouds. The, the woman is scanning the planetary surface to try and find something for them. And she finds a huge mountain peak. Absolutely dwarfs Mount Everest. And the, the ship's system is able to pull up that peak. Now, I don't know about you, but... I'm assuming that she didn't just go and manually look at every mountain peak in their proximity for something like that, right? The ship specifically said, oh, this is the highest level of elevation in the area. Let me show her what that is. Or, you know, maybe she saw it with her eyes and decided to scan for it. But for some reason, her attention was drawn to that. And I'm wondering, this is on the very detailed and technical side. Is this game going to do things like that? Or is the idea of sharing locations going to come down to you have to put eyes on it and specifically pick the data points and those data points are all you can send. You package up the little data points, you send them as a little in-game item and that's it. Or can you add context to those data points? I don't, it's a little confusing I think the way I'm trying to explain it, but I'm sure somebody gets it, which is good enough. Birthday is canceled. What? Birthday is canceled. Like their birthday celebration for Star Citizen? They canceled it? Hopefully, this doesn't take us too long. Allow me to. What was I going to do? I don't even remember what I was about to do now. But I guess I'll just set my destination right now anyways. Oh, I'm changing my active mission. That's right. In fact, let's just cancel this one. Sorry. They put out a delay statement. Oh boy, I wonder if it's a patch that they... <laughs> what is it that they could be doing for their birthday that could have gone so bad that they need to delay it. Oh, wait, we go. Probably a slight advantage to New Babbage since you can just land your ship next to the main building. I do like New Babbage as a city, but it's so far away from everything. In terms of location, Hurston's in the best place. It's basically the center, but um, overall, I like Orison the most for its design and layout. The team found a critical issue that needs correction before deployment. That sucks. Hopefully, they can still get it out today. Other things that were supposed to be in the patch that broke it. And not the birthday surprise itself. Interesting. I wonder if they're actually putting some content in this patch. Maybe bug fixes. So like I said, uh, you'll probably be following this mission that we're doing now and think, Oh, this takes forever and there's not really much to do on it. I am doing this in a weird way. I'm ta I took the mission across the system, so we're going to fly all the way across the system to another planet to take this as opposed to just in our kind of local neighborhood. I don't really advise this because it does take away a lot of your game time. And over time, Star Citizen is 
meant to be a game where you could just kind of stick around a single planet and do all this stuff, but for now, the game's nowhere near complete, so sometimes you gotta do this to get the specific mission you want. If you really want to do a cave-specific FPS bounty mission, then, you know, here you go. We also get a little bit of FPS mining mixed in here, so you'll see a couple of different forms of gameplay and things to do for new players. I'm going to call it two different missions since you don't get an FPS mining mission, but I do believe it should be counted as part of the catalog of things in your, uh, things you can try. Away we go. Cross system. You love cave missions, it got you started into the game. I do wish they were more reliable. I can't wait for rock caves to be changed to the new system. And maybe with that, caves will be less terrible. Because as locations, they're really interesting. But for what they offer right now, they're just not worth it. Um, but I, there's so much potential. Creatures, valuable mineables you can find, valuable loot, little hideouts for pirates, abandoned bodies with interesting loot on it, ruins and uh, artifacts that you can find down there. Just so much stuff you could do in a cave. We just need those caves to not eat our legs alive and kick us out the bottom of the planet and kill us, you know? <laughs> like, just absolute f***ing abuse. Painful caves. Caves have potential. Soon. Soon, TM. Everything's got potential. I always find it funny when somebody... I think I think somebody said this on the podcast recently. That they loved Star Citizen for its potential. And I was like... Is there a stronger word to describe Star Citizen than potential? Yeah, the aliens in the caves mean... I will not be going. And the, the addition of Janelite... The addition of the sand caves... And the supposed rework of rock caves... Which maybe we'll hear about at CitizenCon this year... I think are all some pretty solid signs that this is going to be a thing. I also think that caves are going to be... Here we go. See, I like these little quantum travel moments we have because we can get into these discussions about features. We can get back to the to the crunchy details without actually leaving the game. Um, these underground facilities, I feel like, are giving us some really clear signs that caves will factor into cities. Then again, it's also kind of speculation on my part. So maybe the signs aren't clear. <laughs> maybe they're just tomato colored. But like some of the concept art they gave us for these underground facilities very clearly shows caves melding in with the geometry and the infrastructure of the cities, of the uh, underground facilities themselves. And they talked about how these caves might have mining opportunities or exploration opportunities while you're down there. And then if you go from these, so this is concept art for the UGFs. If you go from that and then you go to building interior concept art, then you will see that those concept art also had kind of caves and underground facilities built into their plans. Which I can find one. is like these underground areas that supposedly lead out of the city. So I could totally see a connection between these building interior locations that are underground in cities out to the uh, UGFs we were just looking at and finally to these caves that we're talking about. They could do some pretty decent networks in there for as like dungeons, but we'll have to see. Uh, do we get memberships? Somebody just drop a freaking bunch of looking glass. Drop 10 memberships in the YouTube chat. Yo, thank you for kicking off our uh, YouTube support today. <laughs> a lot of members. Cheers and welcome to the club, folks. I'm seeing people with names that already were members, but we'll let it go. Double up. You do you. 
Make sure to check out the latest exclusive video, though, if you are just getting added to the list. Um, that is going to be, I think, a fun one to release publicly. Talks about how Star Citizen is viewed as a scam by the media. Talks about how the media kind of paints Star Citizen uh, actually in a positive light in their articles, but in a negative light in their kind of tweets and stuff. And the dichotomy of that, why that's a problem, and it makes it difficult to talk about the game. Check it out if you haven't. It's on the main page on the channel. The membership. We should do branding for a ship called the membership. Can you stop, YouTube? You always do this. You always... You get... Okay, cut it out. Get carried away. Appreciate you, Looking Glass. Thank you for the support. Um, memberships like this on YouTube actually do make this possible. You guys drive us forward every month and make it possible to take the next month on and continue the Star Citizen content. So thanks for helping and uh, make making this happen. How do you get a neat title with our org? Just be more active in the org and it will come to you naturally. Who listens to what media says these days? My friend, if you if you host a Star Citizen stream or you post Star Citizen videos, you will quickly see how many people listen to the media. It sounds so easy. I mean, like there are people who are currently playing in the game right now. If you go into the voice chat with them and just hang out, like we have a bot that tracks people's activity in the org. So as you reach new thresholds, whether you're just hanging out and chat and playing with people, sitting at the main menu with folks, or you're actually in game playing during these events, we host like five, six events every week, you will start to move up within one week of doing that. Talking about media media, not streamers. No, that's what I mean. If you stream this game, you will see things that are said by the media repeated in your comments and in your chat constantly. And it's so, you know, at some point, uh, it gets very annoying. That being said, like I said in the video, I specifically highlighted that companies that cover this game, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, Gaming Bible, IGN, Kotaku, their articles are positive about the game. And it's something that people don't really get to notice because many times the statements that are coupled with those articles, whether in tweets or because of the headlines or whatever, are skewed negative. And usually what is repeated or what the talking points escape that whole interaction aren't the positive points or the neutral points of the article, but the negative points of whatever statement accompanies that article. And so that's what my video is about, because it's kind of ridiculous. It's like they're talking out of two sides of their mouths because they know that that tweet is going to enrage people, get them to the reply, get them to comment, see how much the game sucks. Whereas the article, which is literally just telling people what's new in the update, gets no attention but it's still done because these gaming companies know they should be covering Star Citizen because it is actually a game being made. So it's like this weird sort of prism. It's like putting a prism up in front of the discourse around the game. And that's what the video is about. Raging clickbait is the worst. What would you say is clickbait? If, if it's something that like uh, make something sound enticing but still advertises what's in the video I find that to be bait, baity but I don't think it's wrong because it's still describing what's in the video and this is kind of a common subject uh, when you kind of dip into content creator circles a lot of people talk about this or have differing opinions on this what is clickbait what's okay what's not okay a lot of opinions I don't think I have my actual upgraded quantum drive in here. 
It feels like we're still going very slow. Let's see. Diligence, cool core. Yeah, no. We don't have our upgraded stuff. Bolone. We're flying over. Ay, ay, ay. Was it 321 when I updated my quantum drive? Did I make that mistake? That's why we have a console war segment. Oh my god, the console freaking wars. That's one thing that I also included in the video. It's just how bad console wars are now. Upgrades got wiped. But I upgraded in 320. Oh. Hey there. Fancy seeing you all here. Everyone likes PC more. What it what 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 about what about liking PC? Oh, your experiment worked. You flew to a Microtech mining location with your 400 i looted the boxes, bedlogged. When you came back, you were at the same facility to rinse and repeat. Wow, so you can just that's a bit of an exploit, huh? See now, how do we how do we deal with that? Because they probably should be recurring, right? If somebody else comes to that location, they should be able to also get loot. Maybe the timer should be longer. They don't recur for an hour. So I mean, realistically speaking, you want stuff to be popping back into those loot boxes. But if you allow for somebody to just bedlog so that they respawn, not an exploit? Were you on the same server or a different server? Just joined the stream. What's up, good vibes? Where are we heading? We're going to Microtech right now. How are you doing? Thanks for popping in here with the good vibes. We're taking on a FPS bounty mission in a cave. Just giving a people a look at some of the earlier missions you can do. To have some fun in Star Citizen as a solo player. Uh, how can I know tell which server I'm on? Uh, honestly, the best I do is just look at the people in the server, but you can also see it in the top corner when you do the display info stuff. Guess it doesn't really matter as long as it worked. It sounds like the bedlog is working pretty consistently now. So you were you were in an outpost and you bedlogged and it worked? It was a few hours later. Oh, well, if it's a few hours later, then I think that's fine to get more of that lootable again. That's long enough. Twas long enough. What the where's my slipper? Here we go. Bedlogging has been working great. Oh, we love to hear it. You guys how many years? How many years has bedlogging been a feature and like every patch every year you're like hmm does bedlogging actually work this update and then you ask someone and they're like well it works kind of like this but you have to fly this amount of distance away from everybody and you got to be upside down and there needs to be a box floating on your head and uh the sun has to be on your right and it's like okay so it doesn't work be nice if it actually worked and we could start to not have to deal with spawning at cities and space stations literally every single time we play the game. I'll start giving that a go. I'll start testing that out on stream to see. What I'll probably do is I'll like sign off on stream from the bed and then I'll just drop a quick update on Twitter or Discord when I find out if it worked. Okay, so we've made it to the placey place. 
Let's go find K. I'm going to be wildly disappointed if I die doing this. We're going to spawn all the way back at the other planet. I could set my spawn for... You know what? Ooh, do I set my spawn? Yeah, because I don't want to lose my MSR, really. Uh, let's drop by Port Tresla real quick, set our spawn, and then we'll go. Again, this is extra stuff. You don't have to do this if you're running the mission yourself. It's all redundancy, really. Or just kind of because I'm doing this without planning at all. Wing it. Wing it. Does bedside work? Does bed logging work planet side? Can anybody answer that? It sounds like Space Patrol just did that in an outpost planet side. You bed logged yesterday and got on six hours later and you were perfectly fine. Okay. Just got to be outside an armistice zone. Bed logging's worked for you for ages. Starter player would probably not be going around in an MSR. This is true. But the MSR was going to be the ship that got me f here fastest. So I was hoping that that would help us to save some time. Unfortunately, it did not. You were in an armistice zone. 10 feet from the hab and you still were able to bedlock. So they might have taken that restriction away. Microtech caves suck. Let's get to this station a little bit faster. Aurora's gross. I'll get a cutter or a Pisces or something. I don't need an Aurora for this. That's a little overpowered for what we're doing. Hello, Port Tressler. See, wouldn't it be nice if this just looked recognizably like Port Tressler? Like, I see you still got that white splotch on your lower left quadrant. Good for you, MT. Or PT. MT would be Microtech. Let's call in. Give me a hanger. Give me somewhere to land. <laughs> that was kind of an involuntary reaction. I love you, Aurora. I didn't mean it. Oh, we're coming in a bit hot. <laughs> Open up. Open up! Okay, we're good. Sorry. Sorry for yelling in your ear. You bedlogged today, mid-30k salvage mission because the server was crashing and you came back with all the cargo you had already loaded into your hold was still there. Nice, so you escaped the 30k. Do you get like a badge for that? Like you beat death? Now you get to go into the final, uh, final destination movies. The only hab you can get a ship near without being instantly impounded is New Babaj. Yeah, I think she you meant the hab placeholders at an outpost. You can wind up in the same one and the containers will still be looted. Oh, even if you're a few hours later? How often do they re replenish themselves? Oh man, my triceps are killing me. We've been doing more gym stuffs in the morning since we've been back to the U.S. That's one of the best parts about being here is we get up really early and we either do hikes or go to the gym in the mornings. And it's so freaking refreshing to be back on like a normal workout schedule. No. Huh. Missing some of the floor there, and also your clothes, sir. Okay. People doing the bed logging to loot areas is trash. Makes it so people doing deliveries and shit never end up getting boxes. 
Oh, it kind of depends on the timing. Pisces are claimables. Do I have any cutter? No, I have to claim them both. So be it. One minute. That's enough time for us to go set our spawn. Hey, JS. Doing well. How are you? Out here surviving in the microtech space. Thriving. On the foot race. Getting medipens, avoiding being the dead again, taking on a bounty. And hopefully making some money. Although the main point is just to show off the mission. Attention, emergency staff. Got an accident inbound. It's a pretty big storage room three right now. Man, that guy has a lot of announcements. All right, is our ship ready? Welcome to the ASOP vehicle retrieval system. Nice. We were one second early. Vehicle selected. Stand by. I don't think I'm ever that on time. Hangar two. All good things, my friend. The things in all of them. Should get drinks too. Didn't I? Don't I have crews? I think I have crews in my backpack. Yeah. We good. I packed for this picnic. Will your friends ever be able to bed log in your ship? Yes. I don't know when. But they will. Man, this ship makes some good sounds. Sit down. Come on. Snap, snap. And we're good to go. Hangers. Thank you. Ship systems. Thrusters! And we're up. Away we go. Look at this thing hurtling through space. I love it. Little trash can with thrusters on it. We love you, Drake. Now, where is our mission? Thank you. Please visit again. Got ourselves a proper starter. See that unmarked cave? That's how they get you. You can't find it anyway. You just have to get a mission and it'll take you there. It's very annoying. You need to be able to share ships with friends first before you can bed log in them. So if you come back before they do, you can use the ships. Sharing ships would be great. At least it sounds like we're getting sharing cargo in 3.21. Fantastic. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quantum cancel over the top of this cave. And then we will manually fly the rest of the way. It's a great way to navigate to some of these locations. Just get the closest you can and then hit the U key. And it will cancel out your travel. Turn off your ship. Hit the U key again to turn it back on. And you should be much closer to your destination than you would have been if you flew straight there. Now we'll just cruise control all the way down and hopefully not crash into the ground. Big finger crossings, guys. Let's let's see what happens. Man, this is beautiful looking area, though. We're coming down to this little brown splotch, it looks like. In the middle of a very cold segment of the planet. Very cold, very cool. Looks like my cruise control isn't even on. Is it? Oh, it is. Cool. And I'm actually going to change a setting real quick. See, this is how I end up crashing into the ground. I go into the menus. I'm going to change a setting real cool quick. Uh, so that 
my camera is controlled by my eye tracker. So now we can get some cooler shots like this. Man, this takes a while. We're getting there, though. 60 kilometers. How do you get an eye tracker? Oh, you order one online. Missions? I got a lot of missions available. Ooh, we got a research mission. We could try that after this. We got a couple search missions, cargo salvage. Oh, we got some choices to us. So instead of flying straight there, I'm going to come in a little bit shallow. If you use a webcam, just make sure you set it black and white and tweak the exposure or contrast. Yeah, the webcam does not do eye tracking though. Just keep that in mind. Webcam is just for head tracking or face tracking. Got me killed yesterday. Yeah, well, it was your idea, Tentacle. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that got me killed yesterday. Gets me killed every time I stream. Oh, we've got a enemy ship here. Oh, that's our ship. Wait, what? He's in his ship? I thought it was going to be FPS at a cave. Are you serious? What is he in? A raft? What? So you tell me I flew all the way across the system to fight a freaking raft? Over a... God, dude. What? To evaluate your skills, we would like you to assist us in the apprehension of Kay Immelman from a cave on Microtech. Dude, this thing's going to take so long to kill with a cutter. What a, what a waste of time. Oh my god. What an insane waste of time. So honestly, as a newcomer, you probably shouldn't even try and do K do missions in this game. Because they don't even match. Wow, it's a lot of illegal monitors. They don't even match their description. Okay. Let's try the research mission. And uh, see. God, that is so frustrating. He got out of the cave. <laughs> he found his ship. That was outdated information. I'm not going to fight a raft. Like, that's... 
Gonna take so much additional time to kill a cutter with a raft. We're here to do missions, not bounties. The first mission is a bounty, the next you can do in the cave. But my problem is that the, the actual bounty target is the ship over the cave. So I will have no reason to go into the cave after killing them. I will double check and make sure that's my target, but I'm pretty sure it just said. Uh, yeah, K. Immelman, the person in the raft, is our target. Won't take long to kill the cutter. Hey! So instead, we're setting up a scan probe over in Calliope. However, don't we need to pick up the scan probe first? It's just telling us to fly straight there. Um... Go to Mike L1. Oh, we have to go to Mike L1 to pick it up. Why wouldn't we go to... New Babbage to pick it up. Why Mike L1? Okay, so these missions are uh, kind of like box delivery missions, I would say. These research missions, basically, they task you with dropping off a scientific probe satellite somewhere in space. And uh, that's really it. You just pick it up from a place and you go off and you drop it off somewhere else. There's not really much to it. Just teaches you how to fly and it shows you some locations and navigation skills. Though it would be nice if these were eventually actually, like, if these missions actually did get you some sort of data that you could then use, like these factored into exploration gameplay in the future would be cool. But for now, they're just little, little fetch quests, really. They don't scale based on how far you're flying, so if you see one of these across the system from you, don't take it. You're not going to get paid anymore. You're going to get, like, 4,000 credits for basically everything that I just did. Well, I don't even know how much health the cutter has. It was not enough for me to try and go up against a raft, though. Because once again, you take your cargo ship and you slap some big-ass guns on it. Which, I guess, it works, right? If you're a raft, you're not going to get attacked by a pirate and a cutter because you've got these turrets on your ship. Still just strange. There's just guns everywhere. You got most of the ships you wanted to just play the game for enjoyment, salvage mining, or trying to get some new players and run bunk bunkers. I should start my new player experience series up again soon. I think I might do that when 4.0 hits. That'd be a good time to start. I think there's going to be a lot of new players after 4.0 drops, so maybe I'll start practicing it again in 321 and then we'll jump in for a true uh, experience by then because I like playing with new players. That's a nice game loop. <laughs> All righty. So we made it to our... Microtech L1 Lagrange point. Now we're going to jump into the station, grab this probe, and continue on our way all the way back to the moon. Kind of a little bit annoying that we had to fly all the way about here just to get the probe. And not just fly to, you know, Fort Tressler maybe. But they like to, I mean, missions should be taking your time. So I get the idea that it's a... Uh, a little bit of a maintenance task. I think this is a, probably a solid experience for a newcomer who has no idea what they're doing. Like, if this is the first thing you do in the game, this is just a really easy way to be brought to a beautiful location and understand how space flight works, and that's good enough. It's basically a tutorial mission.
is the space station there? Is it just not rendering? Oh, it's it's behind those clouds. My frame rate is suffering a little bit today. Man, this thing takes forever to slow down. Come on. There we go, buddy. You're okay. What is that, the second time this week that the music has just ended perfectly as we landed the ship? Love that. Driving to a location, the music ends when you get out. That's that main character syndrome. <laughs> Starter missions should teach you how to play. They should. Simple navigation. I like that. Hopefully we see this updated to make you use more of the new star map when we get it. Yeah, this is one of those original missions with the little probe. I'm surprised this still actually works. Lobby time. Let's get that probe. We're out here probing Stanton. Okay. I don't like this trend of not showing me the places I'm going. Like the whole hangar was gone when I got there. Jeez, none of this space station is loading in on time. Uh, actually, this should be on this floor. No, it's not on this floor. Okay, it's probably in the gallery. Yeah, it's got to be the Galleria. Come on. Elevator. Please don't. Please don't crash out. We just made it all the way here. Don't crash out. Please don't crash out. work for me. I don't think we're going to get an elevator. So don't tell me this is another mission. Oh, you know what? I'm suffering from that memory leak issue again. You guys see the stutter? Periodic stutter. It's only going to get worse. I'm going to have to restart the game soon. 
I can't even get the freaking elevator open. I should probably just restart right now. Okay. Let's load back in real quick. Stand by. Mining stations have been taking a long time to load lately. Everything's taken a long time for me to load today. We wanted to do, what, 10 missions? How many have we done? Four? And one of them was a bust? Every time I try to do, like, new player stuff and go through things like these missions, um, it's just, it's such a strong reminder of just how absolutely sh the situation is with these missions. Like, they're just not functioning well. Or they're just not laid out in a way where you can do them well. Maybe it's because no one can hear you scream in space when things go on the other way. Nobody can hear tomatoes scream anyways. They don't pay attention. You and your friend are new and can't do any missions because something always goes wrong. Yeah, the mercenary missions have always been the... Or actually the bounty hunting missions have always been the best bet. But even then, you know, you risk invisible asteroids. And uh, you risk bounties not loading in. You don't think new players are much of a priority for CIG right now? In hindsight, I think they're actually really focused on the new player experience, or in retrospective. Um, more than ever, we're getting a lot of additions in the game that make it easier to understand how the game works. Like, we have an entire con contextual um, contextual control guide that pops up on the right side of the screen now. Plus a new tutorial. Plus, I think they show you the keys at the bottom of the screen too. Like, if you are a new player, you might not know just how bad it was before even just this year. But yeah, even bunkers now are kind of broken. So like, what do we even tell people to do? Am I on Discord? Oh, it's BS. Yeah, we got plenty of folks on our Discord server who would be happy to help you as new players. We can get you into missions. We could give you some actual interesting gameplay to do, like outside of missions with just group gameplay, if you're interested in that. Uh, and we could set you on the right path too, if you just need some tips. Are we even loading in anymore? <sighs> yeah, we're loading. Ever so slowly. Boom, 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 boom. Intacti, thank you for the subscription on Twitch. I appreciate you been around for two months oh man it's been a wild two months I think the game is in a pretty bad state at the moment but that's just the last little bit it feels like missions have just never gotten to a good state I've never been able to reliably recommend missions to players I have a new players guide that I'm trying to get out before citizen con and even in that, like I recognize, I recommend three missions, but half the time they're they're broken. Came from Mass Effect and found those bunkers difficult. Yeah, well, if you get, yeah, if, I mean, compared to a game like Mass Effect, or a lot of different games, if you get shot in this game, you're gonna die. Welcome to the ASOP vehicle retrieval system. Okay, so I don't even have my... Let's see if we can just grab the same mission again. Nope, there are no research missions. So now there is no point for us being... No point for...
for us being out at this station. And we now have less access to missions because we're out at this station. Okay, for, for an easy mission to take, I would also say call to arms, take this as a newcomer. So we can tick that off the list. <laughs> um, I wouldn't do clear claim jumpers. We need to get back over to Microtech. Welcome to the ASOC vehicle retrieval system. Vehicle select. Your vehicle has been delivered to the following location. Oh, I'm in 320 right now. It's useless though. It doesn't work for... Uh, non-mission enemies in 321. Is that a glitch or a permanent change? Where'd you put my ship? Welcome to the ASOC vehicle retrieval system. Hangar 4. Please visit us again. Oh, I'm still hitching. I still have that temp. You can see it, right? It's like every second it kind of hitches. I hate that crap. I freaking hate that. This is the only game that happens with. It was an intentional change. That sucks. Lack of missions hurts the player experience big time. Yes, 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 it does. It's just a really miserable experience. It's, it's like this. I think these are the worst problems I run into. Are these sort of like little hitches that I'm guessing are coming from memory leaks? It's just terrible to play the game when it's functioning like this. I can't seem to close my door. Okay. What the f- Did you guys see that? Why is there a medical kiosk in my ship? I don't think the game's really working right now. Yeah, maybe it's a skill issue. Alright, let's see if we can just make it back to Microtech. If I don't get a good mission there, I think I'm going to call it. Just a simple box mission, I think, would be good enough for us. Okay, I guess that button's not working anymore. Where's our flight ready? Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, totally. Thank God I didn't have anything super important in that ship. You know, just... Why not just randomly blow up? <laughs> ha 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 ha. Am I hoping they will talk more about missions being added at CitizenCon, or do I think it will be more about Squadron 42 and Pyro? Uh, I think they'll do a balance of both. I think we'll be seeing something about 4.0, something about missions, something about features. Something about all that stuff. I This is my first day having really major problems with 3.20 and it's not been great. This did not go very well, did it? I will probably try and do another one of these missions or these types of streams when the game's running a little bit better. And that probably goes for all kinds of streams. Um... But I think I'm probably just going to go ahead and call it today. We've got more prep to do for CitizenCon. We got our gimbal in today, so we got to start working on that. 
getting merchandise in for our giveaways when we go we got our content schedule we're putting together and we're getting our flu shot <laughs> so i gotta go get some stuff done i'm gonna go ahead and say that's about it for me today thank you everybody though for joining me i hope you enjoyed the stream got some good entertainment value out of it maybe you learned something we did get to do a couple of pretty good missions and i think some of that content was worth watching but ultimately <laughs> most of those missions just taught newcomers not to run missions so instead join us on the org down below or go to www.com slash dot no yeah dot gii.com no space tomato gaming.com dot gii <sighs> just go to gii.app okay that's the easiest way to go <laughs> Join, join our Discord. We don't run missions. We just do things and we make money and have fun doing it. So that's my suggestion. Some of these missions I think are okay to do. But as you can see, sometimes they break. So there you go. The way I exploded happened to you in your 890 jump. Yeah. I. It sucks, dude. Especially for a ship like the jump. You learned it was right to not bother <laughs> installing 320. For what it's worth, all of my other experiences have been pretty good. Today did not go well. Send you all over to Detox on Twitch. Ooh, that happened to your 600 eye. I am sorry. Knew it was a good time to take a break. Yep, 3.20 is not necessarily the time to convince yourself to come back in if you were taking a break. But I'll let you know when it was. Better luck next time. Absolutely. Uh, Y'all keep an eye out. Like I said, I got videos coming out. We got stuff going on if you want some gameplay. As always things on the org and uh, i'll be with you again tomorrow same time same place probably to chat probably to play a little bit all around to have a good time i'll catch you all later have a good one stay happy put a smile on your face peace